Hi guys, back once again, day after my birthday, uh, for another episode of Hell Dominance. Anthony here, please remember to like and subscribe, and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and want to see more. Coming up, games from the Women's Super League North and South, and sad news from European Rugby League as a rugby league leader passes away. So the Shield competition started last week um, with two sides who ended the def ended in defeat in round one. Now going on to the Betfred uh, Women's Super League Shield in a head-to-head -head this Sunday um, as Wakefield Trinity clash with the Warrington Wolves. Um, that is the 15th of August 2021 so I'll be coming for a, re a review with that in a few moments. Um, just to give you some background on the first round, uh, Wakefield were beaten 52 points to nil by an impressive Featherston Rovers side last time out, while Warrington were beaten 28-26 by Huddersfield. Trinity though have endured a winless regular season, finishing bottom of the table, losing 7 from 7 games due to Covid, oh, unfortunately, uh, they weren't able to play more, while Warrington finished 8th with in the 10 team league, after picking up 2 wins from their 8 fixtures that they played. So the two not farm teams, but in the last game the Giants um, edged out Warrington 28 points to 26 as I mentioned uh, in the closest of margins and that was a shock to me as Warrington have been the better side in the Betfred Women's Super League out of the two teams but Huddersfield has started to make some post uh, end of season form tell and it culminated in the win it goes but it wasn't good news, unfortunately, for Wakefield, as again they were on the wrong side of a drumming. As Warrington Wolves women ran in 17 tries, including three hat tricks and an emphatic win over Wakefield at Victoria Park. Warrington took the lead four minutes in when Sammy Simpson, a clever offload, freed up Abby Johnson to score down the left side. And the Y had a second shortly after, after Charlie McGrath had broke through the Trinity defence to score a superb solo try. Third score quickly followed, this time Georgia Sutherland skipped down the, across the front of the defensive line and then forced, his, oh, uh, forced, forced her way over, I pod. Sutherland had her second uh, halfway through the first half as she managed to evade the Wakefield defenders to score in the right corner. Six minutes later, the wire had their fifth try of the half as Holly James sold the Wakefield line a clever dummy and managed to power over on the right edge. Warrington then went on to extend their lead on the half hour mark with Simpson getting on the after managing to hold off the Wakefield defenders to score down the left. Sutherland completed a first half hat trick on the following set showing some impressive the pace down the right edge to touch down under the post. An eighth try of the half came through Michelle Davis with the Wakefield fullback allowing Davis's kick to, pound, uh, to bounce and after helping it towards the wrong in goal area Davis was the first person on hand to get the ball down for a try. Simpson got to the second of the afternoon as the Products of some solid passing down the left edge, featuring Johnston and Kira McCosh. Simpson collected the hat trick try after the break uh, before another superb solo effort from Sutherland, resulting in the fourth try of the game. Where and Mullaney scored a quick, uh, hat tr quick fire hat trick to become highest third hat, hat trick scorer of the game. It seemed like that the game was off, done and dusted. Uh, and, it's so, and it wasn't the end of the scoring, unfortunately, for Wakefield, as Armani Shorrox um, powered over under the post before Emily Downs rounded off the game with a solid solo run, adding to the score. So, um, Orenson gets a win on the board postseason. Good solid start. 
but fortunately Wakefield again now are um, in no man's land to the team. What I'd say to them is keep your heads up because this is all about experience. No one's exper uh, expecting them to pull up trees this season after this season. But it's time to get solid. Stay together, get solid. Work on the defence, work on defensive lines, working on matching up with the offensive players that are running at you, and then becoming solid at that. No, it was boring, boring stuff. It's no way to win. I've said in many of the videos previously, great point scorers win games, great defences win championships. I'm not saying that they will win championships because at this moment in time the differences between the two teams are so, so massive. But a few players in and keeping the course and uh, keeping that squad together, never know. We play some very good games this season and we're unlucky on a couple, must admit. But it seemed to be waning at this point and they're waiting for the season to be over. Don't think like that. Just go again, have a laugh. Do things that you wouldn't expect. Bodies on the line. Also, so um, this one was Morgan Clan, actually, as um, the Golden Ferns were decimated uh, the previous game, and I didn't got the experience, shall we say that, to play a side as good as the army side, who finished top of their group, their group um, and started to come into some good form, getting players back. Um, there's not much to, there's not too much to say, as this was a good game for the army to try things, and uh, going forward, and implement offensive play getting all themselves tuned up for. it was a very one-sided affair as I think half time was 74 and eventually it just ran to a 10 which is a little better in the second half for Golden Burns but it wasn't a score that was not on the card, shall we say that? Army came through it with no injuries from this game, but had uh, injuries in the previous game. They'd be back for the final week, we just don't know at this point. The Golden Ferns, this game was not about winning for them, all about the experience. Yes, they wanted to win it. But the golfing class was there to be seen early on. All about the experience to find out what mantle these girls have, these women have. Next season there would be pro there will be progression. You will definitely see they'll probably have another well they'll probably have another team to play against as well. So there's more games, more practice. They may even bring in more players. As it's getting on TV. That's the biggest pulling point. This season was all about getting the Golden Ferns out there and in announced that Southern Rugby will be there. Next season is about progression. We're seeing better performances, closer games against the Cardiff side in their, in their part. Then that is a plus for the next season. They know where they're at and they know where they're going. It's all about growth. I am not going to go through the, the scorers, I'm not going to go through anything else. I'm just going to focus this on the Golden Fair. Just one message to them. Well done for getting to the semi final this time. And well done for competing in the era of the uh, Women's Super League South. Thank you so much. Hope you'll be back again next year, all the boys that are there. Not thank you very much, but if you are, excellent. We'll look forward to watching you next season. It's 
it's a rugby league, it's our sport. You're part of the rugby league family. Whatever you do. Now go out and push the golden ram, even if that means. Improve them. You improve the golden fern, you might improve with them. But might be better players coming in at your place. You to get better again. So. One more time. Thank you, Golden First, for being involved. And thank you for playing rugby league. Can't wait to see you next year. And on the army side, good luck in the final. Tough one against Cardiff. As you're probably two teams that are evenly. In a hard fought semi final, the second game of the day, um, the Cardiff Demons had a bittersweet uh, 38 points to 20 victory against the London Broncos in this one Betfred Women's Super League semi final in the South. Um, a bittersweet, as I say, they won. But an injury to Cardiff Demons and Wales captain Shawnee Davis on the 75th minute meant it was a premature range to a half forward semi final, and the result standing. Davis was injured in a legitimate tank tackle and was unable to be moved, so there was no chance to restart the game. After scoring 54 tries in the last three games, the Demons knew that they were in a match for the first time this season, but did enough in the first 20 minutes to secure victory. Lowry Knockett, uh, um, with four tries per game at, so far this season, raced away for an opener after 30 seconds with Davis converting. Beyond Lewis um, set up Liam Burnell uh, for the second try on, on six minutes. Scoring under the sticks to make it an easy kick for Davis. Burnell quickly went over for a second. This one going unconverted, but Davis made up by scoring a superb individual try 13 minutes into the game. For the second kick in a row, Davis hit the post out, out to make the scores only at 20 points to nil. The fifth try came on the 19th minute when Molly Reardon scored a typical hooker's try, diving low from dummy half, which David this time converts. Cardiff didn't even make their first error until the 21st minute. Uh, a drop ball gave London a chance to break um, a chance for a try back and they didn't waste it. After winning a second set, Vicky Jackson prepared uh, Jamie Blazewski to go over to break their ducks for the game. Wales International Vice Captain Catherine Salter converted. They got another try back after winning a goal line dropout. Iona McCluskey, not long off the bench, stormed over with Salter unfortunately not able to convert this try. Iona McCluskey has been a Game changer when coming on for the off the bench for the uh, London Broncos and has been doing that for the last three games. It's a great tactic that London are using, and with two good halfbacks, one solid and one a bit more explosive, uh, as tiring def defenders are coming to the fore when the half is going a bit older. And it's a great, it's a great effort. The, uh, the explosive McCluska. It was Cardiff who went over, went into half time on the incendency though, after Burnell shook off all challenges to ease the centre uh, through the centre to claim her hat trick. Wales 100th dual cold international Fionn Lewis converted on the Hooter to put the scores at half time to 30 10. And that's not a bad score to have. I'm going to take a nap.
London scored the first after the break though. It took just 60 seconds, oh, sorry, 90 seconds for Emily Helgren uh, to force her way through. Courtney Trekos kick though sailed wide. The comeback continued. Wales international Emily Hughes scored London's fourth try um, off the of the game uh, that Trekko did convert this time. The next score was going to be very important and it came from Cardiff. Lewis opened a gap for Norkit to sprint 50 metres to put the ball down under the post for their seventh try of the game. London nearly got another try back but Salter was held up over the line and the Broncos defended well too as Cardiff looked to cement the win with the eighth try, keeping Demons out for two successive uh, sets before Davis's injury dampered any celebrations. It was a good game to be honest, after the initial Cardiff Fury, uh, Fury of chances in the first half. London came back and got their confidence back and realised that they're in the game and they could play this. Yes, Cardiff have had internationals, but they've not really had any sustained pressure on them from other teams. I think there was one game at the beginning of the season, and then that was it. They were blowing, they were blowing the opponents away at the time. So, it wasn't a foregone conclusion before the game. It wasn't Cardiff were the best team ever in the women's game, blowing them away. But, all I can say is that Cardiff have got some natural rugby league players uh, compared to the others in the league. We'll see how that develops next year as I'm hearing that more teams join in the South next season. One of those, uh, I think, Brighton, but don't hold me to that. They've gone quiet, so it must be something. But, first team into the semi-finals. Cardiff, but as I said, bittersweet. Good luck, and good uh, get well soon. So, in a bit of sad news, the board of European Rugby League has expressed its huge sadness after the peaceful passing of its chair, Maurice Watkins. CBE at his home in Cheshire, aged 79, um, from prostate cancer. Maurice Watkins, who um, joined the ERL board as chair in July of 2012, replacing Richard Lewis, has overseen the growth of the federation from 23 to 42 members covering Europe, Middle East, Africa, North and Central America, and as well as the Caribbean, with more than ever before ranked as full an affiliate state as countries. One of UK's best known sports lawyers and a long-time director of Manchester United, who, during his ERL tenure, the volume of International Rugby League um, being played by Confederation members has increased exponentially, as well as um, being one of the directors of the Rugby Football League in England for 12 years and serving until 2014, during which time he led a comprehensive review of the sport. He also served on the boards of Lancashire County Cricket Club, British Swimming and the British Basketball Federation, as well as a host of non-sporting charities, leading the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital charity to build new build appeal, raising £20 million. He was awarded the CBE in the Queen's Birthday Honours List in 2011 for his services to charity. On behalf of the ERL board, Graham Thomas, Thompson uh, commented, Morris provided great experience in his role, which our organisation massively benefited from. His strong legal career provided great guidance on many matters. Governance was another key area he led in. His reputation in the sport was high, high and having him uh, as our chair brought us credibility and the ability to develop new partnerships 
The initial relationship with the European Union was due to his extensive work and reputation. Thompson added, All our general managers benefited from his wisdom and mentoring, which was always delivered in such a supportive manner. His board colleagues enjoyed the same and appreciated his kindness and generosity of his time he gave to everyone. He was fine company with a good sharp sense of humour and was proud to be the chair of the ERL. He loved the culture of the Federation and greatly admired the work that all the nations made in a collective manner to the sport. It is a very sad day, none more than so than or his family who are uppermost in our thoughts. We have been fortunate to have had Morris play a major role in our journey and will always be grateful for that and remember his unstinting contribution accordingly. And that's it for another video from me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember, like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide. And um, please comment on how the format is still going if you want to see more of something. Anything. Get involved. Get engaged. Like anything. No one gets better when you're involved. Whether watching, sharing, subscribing, or commenting. Anyway, I'm getting tired now, as you can tell. But in the meantime, stay safe, all the best, and I'll see you in the next video.